Hey guys, Adam Katz for DogTrainerToolbox.com. In the past couple of weeks, I've been testing out different microphones and ways to capture audio to hopefully come up with a good economical solution to help you guys when you do your dog training videos. And today I'm testing the Movo shotgun mic. I actually wanted to test the video, the, the Rode Micro, Rode Video Micro, I think it was called, but they were back ordered. So Movo was able to send this out to me within a day and I got it and I wanted to test it out now. Actually really, really impressed with it. There's a lot of echo in this room, so maybe this isn't the best example, but maybe in a couple days I'll take it outside and I can show you. I'm really impressed with it for a $40 mic, which is about $30 less than the Rode mic. It seems to be working pretty well so far. The only downside is that the dead cat that comes with the mic, the dead cat is like the fuzzy thing that you fit over the mic that acts as like a windshield to cut down on the wind noise. Uh, the dog thinks it's actually... A dead, a dead cat. <laughs> so um, aside from that, he's absolutely enthralled with it. In fact, he's lying at my feet right now. Um, it seems to be working pretty well. Now, what are we going to talk about today? I wanted to go over 10 different things that we're constantly watching when we run Google Ads campaigns for dog training business owners, presumably just like yourself. Um, you know, a lot of people think that Google Ads, you just set it up and it's kind of a set it and forget it kind of deal which if you're in any type of competitive market, it is not. In fact, the one thing I, I, I love is going into a market and running ads against other dog trainers who think that Google Ads is just set it and forget it. Maybe they check it once every month, once every couple of months. And what we're able to do is we're able to go in and figure out exactly which keywords that they're bidding on um, and basically what price they're bidding on and bid one penny above them and It'll be months, in some cases years, before they realize, oh, you know, they need to address their bid. So bid strategy is really important. But I'm going to go over the 10 different things, 10, not the only 10 things, but 10 things that we are constantly watching for uh, when we run Google Ads campaigns. And maybe you'll find it helpful if you do run your own Google Ads campaigns. Stick with me. I'm going to take you over to my desk. All right, I'm going to run through these kind of quickly from my notes because 10 points is way too much for me to remember off the cuff. Uh, if you don't understand some of these, if you don't understand any of these, it's probably a good indication that you you should look into hiring someone like myself. You don't need to hire me specifically, but some a professional to run your ad campaign, specifically if you're in any type of competitive market. Number one, all campaigns have their keyword bids manually adjusted and optimized on a weekly basis. Number two, every account that we manage has their ad spend budget looked at, adjusted, and optimized on a weekly basis. The reason for this is that sometimes in order to spend, let's say your ad spend budget is $30, the client's ad spend budget is $30 a day. Sometimes you need to set the ad spend budget at $100 a day just to get Google to spend $30 a day. Because if you, if you set it at $30 a day, it may only spend $10 a day. So you have to kind of game uh, Google system a little bit in order to get it to spend the full $30. Because of that, you need to keep a close eye. In fact, we're, we're doing this pretty much every day um, on all of the accounts that we have to do that for. In some, some markets, you have to do it. Some markets, you don't. Um, but when you're doing it, you got to pay attention to that because you don't want to be blowing through the $400 in the event that there's suddenly a surge in click inventory. So you got to be on top of that. We're watching it. Number three, we're continually checking the actual searches being performed, which can change over time. We're watching those and we're constantly adding the good search terms to the accounts that we manage and the bad search terms are getting added to our shared negative keyword list. We run a negative keyword list that currently has over like 17,000 negative keywords and those negative keywords tell Google don't show the ads for certain things that we don't want the ads being shown for, like dog trainer TV show, which doesn't result in a lead. It just results in a click. And we're spending, you know, you'd be spending two to $4 per click. You, you can't be screwing around with a bunch of, you know, clicks and keywords that don't convert. The name of the game with Google ads is quality. It is not quantity. Number four, all Google analytics and Google ads conversions are checked on a weekly basis. Number five, all integrations with other platforms such as call rail, or Unbounce or some of the other platforms that we use are checked on an ongoing basis to make sure that everything's working correctly and everything's playing nicely with each other. Number six, all conversion data 
recorded on other platforms that we're using, again, like Unbounce or CallRail, we're checking that those are consistent with what we're seeing within the Google Ads uh, platform. So for example, if the Google Ads platform shows that we only got, let's say four conversions on a day, a conversion is a lead, uh, but CallRail or a call tracking company that we use for some of our clients is showing that there were six calls. We need to go in there and figure out why there's a discrepancy. Number seven, we're going through all of the, both the, the search-based text ads as well as the text-based display ads and removing the poor performing ads and substituting them with other ads. That's part of what we call the A-B process. We're testing A against B to see which one performs better. And if one is performing poorly, that one gets nixed. And another one that becomes what we call the challenger gets put in its place to compete against our champion so that we're constantly testing and improving the overall performance of the campaigns. For display ad campaigns, this is number eight, for display ad campaigns, actual ad placements are added or excluded on an ongoing basis because we wanna see which of these perform better. Now, to be fair, display campaigns typically only account for maybe 10%, whereas 90% are text-based search ads uh, because the search ads typically do better than the display ads, but we will run some display ads just to have a little bit of a, of a, a, a mix within our advertising approach. Uh, the other thing is that the display ads generally cost about 10% of what the search clicks cost. Now the search clicks get better quality leads. And so because of that, you're spending way less on the display ads, but you need to buy 10 to 30 times as many of the display ads to get one conversion like you would with one, um, one click from a search ad. So it's a little bit of a balancing act, but generally speaking, here's the tip. If we can buy uh, display clicks for less than 70 cents and definitely less than 50%, uh, definitely less than 50 per 50 cents. Wow. It's been a long morning. Um, then we'll do it because that represents a bargain and it kind of, it kind of fills in the gaps with our generalized search campaigns. So you're, you're getting a different quality of, um, of clicks. Typically you need more clicks, but you're paying less for those clicks. So in a market where we're already buying 100% of the market share, maybe we're only spending a thousand bucks a month to do that. And the client, you know, wants more, wants more leads and we've got budget left over. Let's say, let's say uh, maybe the budget is 1200 or 1500 a month and we're spending a thousand bucks and we're buying 100% of the market share. What we'll do is we'll fill in the gap, the difference with those display ad clicks because we can buy them much cheaper, but the, the downside is that you have to buy 10, time, 10 to 30 times as many to get the same amount of conversions you would get from one of the search clicks. Wow, that sounds confusing. It kind of is. Number nine, audiences, visitor demographics, locations, and ad schedules are optimized on an ongoing basis. And finally, number 10, the auction insights tab is checked on an ongoing basis because that's what tells us what percentage of market share we're buying up Although there's other ways to determine what percentage of market share you're buying up, but specifically, it gives you insight into what your competition is doing. So for example, if there's a new person, a new dog training business that shows up in your market, we'll exactly, we can exactly see um, you know, what percentage of the market share they're bidding on. Or for example, if you have an existing client who uh, starts to employ a more aggressive bidding strategy, we'll be able to see that. And so checking that is very important. And typically in most markets, you want to be right towards the very top. Hey, I'm Adam Katz for dogtrainertoolbox.com. If you found some of this confusing or if you found all of this confusing, it probably makes sense to hire somebody like us to run your Google ad campaigns for you. What we offer is a 100% done for you Google ads management solution from soup to nuts. We take care of everything from the bidding strategies to the negative keyword list the tracking to knowing which keywords we should be targeting and how to allocate your budget. All of that is 100% done for you. If you're interested in learning more about how to get more desperate dog owners to call you each and every week, each and every month, each and every year, a consistent stream so that you don't have to lie in bed at night wondering how do I get my dog training business from where it is to where it needs to be. Check out dogtrainertoolbox.com and in the upper left-hand corner, you'll see a box that says expert Google ads management for dog trainers only. Click on that box, read through that page at the bottom. There's a link to my calendar booking app. And if it makes sense to do so, you can use it to book a free 30 minute phone consultation with me. So we can find out if what we're doing with Google ads would be a good fit 
to help you grow your dog training business. Hey, you can chat with me at the Dog Trainer Marketing Group on Facebook. It's completely free to join and you'll be amongst over 2,600 other professional dog training business owners, presumably just like yourself, sharing ta tactics, secrets, and strategies to help grow their businesses. So check that out too. I'm Adam Katz for dogtrainertoolbox.com. Talk to you soon, guys.